All right, my friends, look at this cute little cream puff. John Deere 14 series PZ though. So that means there's no self-propel. And the owner's had it forever. Owned it since new, I think. But what's been happening now, he says that when he cuts his lawn, lawn and he uh, stops to, let's say, pick up some uh, dog poop on the yard, he goes back to it and it won't start back up again. And that's all I know about it. Now, after looking at it a little bit, come this way, there isn't a lot of throw on the uh, cable to turn it on and off, but it might be enough, you know, like... So, I am just going to prime it up, you're going to watch. So let's just give it a couple of squirts. And this paint will come off. That'll, just a little bit of that's, uh, steel wool and soap. Fine steel wool, like 4 R, Not SOS. Okay, let's see if she cries. I noticed a little smoke coming out of the uh, exhaust, but maybe it got tipped, you know, because he, I think he's got a new mower now, I don't know. So let's just start it up again, see if it starts. Well, that's interesting. He's absolutely right. And the one thing interesting about this lawnmower, guys, is it's a Briggs engine on here, right? And it was made, it should say either on the tag or on the front here. Oh, yeah. Don't reach under a lawn. Uh, what? It's older than Frank, 1996. It's 26 years old. And I hate to say it, folks. No, I don't want to say it. They don't make it like that anymore. I'm just going to make sure it's got the hoil. Maybe it's got too much on it. No, it's just exactly right. So I'm either thinking it's got a bad coil, it's heating up and it won't let us start it the second time, or there's a breather issue on the air cleaner. Like, uh, with that amount of smoke, is it pulling oil from the crankcase? Just thinking, right? Can you? Sm I, I can smell more than the oil. My brain. We'll come back in a bit. Okay, we'll I'll give the. We'll, we'll just do it right away here. We'll do that, we'll get the shovel, we'll get the yard cigars off the lawn, walk across the lawn, put it in the compost bin, garden, garbage, whatever, put the shovel back against the grave, come back, close the bale, and start it up again. I'm also wondering if the engine's just a little warm. So let me, I'm going to play with it. We'll get it. Oh, let's put it up on the hoist right now. That's always fun. I tell you, this is a nice lawn. It'd be worth repowering if you had the right one, right? 
repowering an engine, repowering a lawnmower is never as easy as you'd think because you've got engine size, shaft length, levers on whatever side. Lordy, just look how high he's got it set, eh? Long shaft. Gorgeous blade. I tell you, these John Deere mowers were classics and well made. Okay. We've got to get the uh, 5 16th net driver to have a look at this air filter. Come right over here and you look at the layer. Could even be such a filthy air filter that it's not breathing right, eh? I've seen that, and then I've seen him burn oil. They take oxygen out of the crankcase. Well, not really. Okay. I'm just going to look into there. Get a little flashlight. Well, it primes good. Huh. Now, Wayne from EP Performance, the dad, he's been telling me to tighten up the, uh, just with a half inch ratchet, the head bolts on these old guys. And just, and I haven't been doing that. So let's just have a little look. I'm just going to see. He says, especially on the muffler side, right? So we'll start here. Nope. 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 Well, that was a good thought. Thanks, Wayne. Well, I'm going to look at that plug. Let's just see if it starts now, because it's 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 uh, a different temperature, right? No. Okay. It does start. I I'm having a hard time. Zero on this one down. This looks like uh, what do you call those plugs? First fire. Oh, it is black. Handling this one with pliers because we know she's hot. Huh. I'd almost be tempted to do a compression test, but all you get is the uh, you get a compression mealy set about 70 pounds, and that's all you read. So I'm gonna just I'm just gonna think about this. This is a mysterious one. Simple mower. It just doesn't get any more simple than that. The clamp is off. Plugs out. I mean, if the primer works after 26 years, you know it's been maintained. Well, I'm just going to look at the gas while I'm pondering my situation. No, no, no. While I'm pendering the situation. Alright, well, there's a lot of gas in there. Everything but the dust, it'll be a bit of stuff in the bottom. There we go. It's got pretty good fuel. Sometimes touch wood, these uh, these older one-piece Bridge and Stratton's 
gas tank's cracked, eh? But this one's been stored inside. It's in very good shape. I can see light through the filter, even though it's got a few, a few crud bunnies on it. You know, the word crud bunny, <laughs> that goes back, I'm 66, and that goes back to when I was 20 in college. And one of the guys I was in college with, his name was Steve, he used the word crud bunny. And then another guy, his name Dave, I left the phone company for a year and two months and went over to uh, the oil company thinking that everything would be great over there and it was the same thing, so, basically. Big company, right? So I went back to the phone company. Yeah, that, that looks okay. But it isn't catching, right? Like, it isn't snappy. And I'm going to just feel compression with my fingers. Sometimes, you know, us older guys, we get a, you get a feeling. feeling. As far as I can go. Now, don't touch anything too hot. That is pretty hot. Liquefy my finger. Ooh, I can't do that. It's too hot. Well, let's do a compression test. I haven't done a compression test in a while. That's what you buy these nice tools for, right? Are you guys watching this nonsense? So everything is normal. It should show about 50 to 70 pounds on there. Oh, it's showing. So it should showing uh, 60, 70, 80 pounds on that. Makes you wonder if it has got the uh, compression release, eh? Should have. Right there. Very nice. I wonder what my uh, coil situation is like. Okay, I'm going to turn you off and do some searching for parts. I heard it change your RPM. Set the spark. Pretty happy with myself today. I got the uh, my, my uh, inventory back in control. It only takes. I spent a month getting my inventory put all away, and everything's wonderful. Uh, two days, and everything was shot to heck. Okay, so let's just look at that. Look at that spark, Luke. Right there. Okay. I took this spark plug out. It isn't a it isn't a fast fire or a whatever. It's a laser. These are as cheap as you can get. And uh, when I first took it out, I measured one meg of resistance, which is a very high resistance, almost open circuit. And then as it cooled off, with my meter here, I don't know if you can see that or not, but the vice is holding it still. Come on, Bruce. It's back to a zero, basically, uh, a regular spark plug. So I'm going to heat that spark plug up with map gas, and then we're going to do a resistance check on it. Now 
I have to. <laughs> well, I'm not going to explain everything. Okay, now let's get our our ohmmeter back in here. We'll uh, prop it up there so you can see it. Maybe. No, nope, not quite. Eh? Can you see it now? Yes. I'm going to do end-to-end -end resistance on this. The ground is touching the vise. That's fine. Four megs, four megs, four megs, four megs. See that? 16 megs. Now, let's do a quick cool down. I'm going to just check it again. I hope you guys got to see that right there. I'm going to reach around you. Right to the point. It's going down. 24 ohms. You get a bad plug. It's going open in the heat. All right, my friends, just come and look at this. I put this back together again. I've had lots to do with the 14 series John Deere's, although this one has a, a Briggs and Stratton engine, not a Kawasaki. And I put this back together and you can still see there's quite a bit of fluff. But this just fits in here. It clips in. You pop it out with a screwdriver on these terminals here. And uh, it fits in on a groove down in here. Like that. All right. And we'll just, I'm just going to check something. Look at this. Now, when I lift up this back, you don't see it from the back, right? You don't see it from the back. You just see it when you take this crazy cover off. This now screws onto here, which holds the cover off. Look. It's gone. There it is. So I'm just going to... Uh, Get my brush. We'll just scrape this out a little bit. Isn't that weird? So can anybody tell me what that's for? Almost looks like an overflow of some sort. Okay, watch. Hold your breath. thousand Bruce Bucks that this has never been off. There it is. Now that's pretty freaking weird, eh? And then this is our little screw down who's it that does nothing. done this I just got to change the oil I'm going to check the air filter because I believe I already changed it to get it to run right no I didn't no I'm going to run it for a few minutes and then change the oil in case I get oil onto the filter when I tilt it Okay, so we're almost there. Okay, we're going to start this bad boy up. We're going to let it run for a few minutes, and then we're going to 
and then we will uh, let the oil out. Come on! Prime! I'm kind of in like with this lawnmower, you know. I might have to adopt it. Okay. Should start with one pull. Oh no, it's been sideways. Okay, big test before I change the oil. It's been sitting for about five minutes. This is the time frame the owner that used to have it said it wouldn't start. Okay, now I'm going to just change the oil. And this one has a bung underneath. The old ones do. Yes, I'm doing it this way. Sometimes I tilt them from the back, sometimes I tilt them this way. But this is where the, the drain is. And the blade does not have to be sharpened on this one. I kind of looked after it, eh? Just let it chain, drip for a while. Okay, let's get an air filter on there. It's already been wiped out once, right? We just had a lot of fluff flying around for a while. Okay, so a new plug, new air filter, almost an oil change. We're almost there. Let's get that oil in there. Five hundred milliliters of the best. And we're going to start her up, make sure she still goes. I got one little thing I don't like. Like this thing right here, it's broken. Should be like that. And uh, I gotta just see if I've got one. I might have. I don't part very many of these old John Deere's out though. This is as close as I've got right here. Should work. Oh, yeah. oh. just a stiffaroo, that's all. metric or it wouldn't turn on. Metrics are a finer thread. It's just old or dirty or crusty or rusty. There. Where we? Now let's just go over here and see if there's, now that I got one on, we'll see if there's anything exactly like that. Weird. Nope. That's perfect. So we're done. The application was a success. Thanks for watching this one, guys. 
So I'm just going to check the RPMs again. I got them set at 3120, I think. I'm not mistaken. I'm running out of gas. This is our last look at the John Deere 14PZ, not self-propel, right? And uh, yeah, this one turned out really well. Uh, a little bit of plug trouble and uh, stuff like that at the beginning, but uh, it sure uh, it sure did turn into a lovely mower. Let me just let you have a look at the other side here. Thanks for watching.